What is up guys, Greedy Knight here talking about the gameplay footage at GamesCon and the confirmed changes for Charge Blade. I'll be breaking down what the new moves do and what it means for the weapon in Monster Hunter Wilds. Let's get into it. Starting off with the changes, files have been upgraded in Monster Hunter Wilds. You can stack more energy into them once they are quote unquote full. In previous games, when you loaded files with topped off files, the energy would just disappear into the void. Now you can give each file a Super Saiyan haircut with respective buff. Element discharges will consume half a file while the SAD will still consume all files, but with an apparent 66% increase in damage to overcharged files. Note that it will fill as much as it can with the energy you have. For example, if you have one empty file and four full files, loading yellow energy will fill one file and then give two files the overcharge state. File damage in general has received a motion value boost as well. There are two new ways into element boost aka shield charge. During a file load, you can hold the circle button or equivalent to put the shield in front of you and instantly charge your shield. Similarly, after a shield thrust, you can input R2 plus triangle plus circle to do the same thing. It does look like a guard point, but there isn't any footage confirming it to work as one. And there are subpar uses for a guard point into SAD input that consumes all of your files beforehand. Note that overcharge files double the duration of shield charge. Assuming 30 seconds per file, you would get 5 minutes with 5 files instead of the usual 2.5 minutes with 5 files. Shield Charge appears to apply a 20% boost on the chopping half of element discharges in line with previous games. Super Amped Element Discharges or Supers can no longer directly be done after a Shield Thrust in Sword Mode or from Idle in Axe Mode. You have to now combo an Amped Element Discharge into a Super from these inputs. Your second set of options are to use it after a Guard, Guard Point, Perfect Guard, Wound Destruction, or Power Clash. This bars the super behind timing your guards and using alternate mechanics or you will be forced to take the long way around. It's not a great change because it hinders the flow of super spam. However, you can now use a super after receiving heavy knockback from an attack, removing the medium knockback or better stipulation from previous games. Before, if you received heavy knockback, you would just lose the ability to input a super entirely. Apparently, you can also angle your supers in any direction after any of your guard options, but the only clip I found is a 90 degree turn, so this might need to be tested once we get our hands on a demo. You are no longer forced to only morph back to sword and shield mode after an AED. You can evade, combo a super, or use the new AED follow-up, which lets you double chop afterwards. From the follow-up, you can use any axe attack or morph back to sword and shield mode. These additions are a direct buff to Savage Axe as a playstyle since they weave the AED into your bread and butter combos. Rushing Element Discharge is the discharge version of the Advancing Chop. You press the direction with Circle to perform the move. Its main use is to close the distance in Axe Mode, now with a File Explosion for the extra impact file damage. This allows you to microspace your chops with the Idle Burst Chop if the monster is close, or close the distance with the Rushing Chop. Since Axe Mode is a bit slower, Putting you in a good position for your double chops and AEDs is vital for optimal damage. Note that this input can be used after a file load, just like the idle burst chop, just input a direction with circle. Savage X mode got a rework. The old Iceborne guard point and rise break file load activations are gone. Tying activation to the perfect guard, focus strikes, mounting finisher, and power clash finisher. The new Savage Axe cuts file consumption in half except for the super. You can stack the two halving effects of Savage Axe and Overcharge files to negate file consumption, giving you unlimited discharge power except for the super. This enables you to spam chops without worrying about file maintenance, similar to Condensed Spinning Slash, but with a bit more effort to set up. The estimated duration of Savage Axe is 2 minutes, but this is not the confirmed duration since there are occasional cuts and clips during the stream. Lastly, the Savage Axe ticks are implied in the manual to be tap based, but it can be toggled to holding down the input via the settings. Instead of draining files to keep the buff active like in Iceborne or generating files with chops and deactivating on Morph and Rise Break, it seems to have melded the good of both iterations to create this new one. You maintain the Savage Axe buff regardless of mode like in Iceborne while implementing the file improvement and the hold down input of Condensed Spinning Slash. Focus strikes are done by holding L2 and R1. 
You can target an area with the focus double slash to inflict a wound. Targeting and damaging a wound will destroy it, comboing straight into Savage Axe mode. This serves as your on-demand option for Savage Axe which isn't great. While wounding is an interesting mechanic, you can only apply and destroy a wound once for most monsters. Doshaguma is the current known exception to the rule. In theory, once you run out of wounds to destroy, assuming a hunt lasts long enough, you can run out of on-demand Savage Axe activations via the Focus Strike. The original mounting system has returned with a bit of a rework. It appears the option to use your finisher immediately is available, so I'm assuming you have to time it when the monster won't buck you off. However, it was stated that one finisher isn't enough to topple the monster. You will have to engage with the usual mounting threshold to get the topple. The main reason you bother with mounting is because the charge blade finisher activates Savage Axe. So spam those jump attacks to get onto the monster. Outside of leaping off of your buddy, Charge Blade has next to no aerial options so this way of activating Savage Axe will be very unreliable at best. Power Clash is a flashy new, I can tank that mechanic. When a monster does certain attacks, most likely charge attacks and lunge attacks, if you block it, you can do a power struggle DBZ style and push back the monster by mashing fast enough. You can follow up with a super, a sword thrust or savage axe. Since charge blade is a guard pointing weapon, this may be the second most reliable way to get savage axe activated. Perfect guard is the quote unquote default way to get savage axe, while the guard point will serve as the primary option for powerful telegraphed attacks like charge attacks since it has the extra level of guarding power. It creates incentive to use both guards based on the situation. There isn't confirmation on how much knockback is required to trigger power clashes, but from the footage it may require at least medium knockback to initiate the animation. Charge Blade is looking good but not perfect due to the SAD rework. With the absence of switch skills, Capcom had to make a decision between focusing on the super spam or Savage Axe playstyles and they chose Savage Axe. I agree with them. It's the more well-rounded playstyle both mechanically and build wise. It has you play Monster Hunter normally by promoting good positioning and targeting good hit zones on top of your standard charge blade stuff. In contrast, Super Spam is the more caveman like playstyle and build since it fixates on the super and its related file calculations. It ignores certain hit zones and conventional positioning due to how the files dealt damage and how shockwaves landed on the monster. While I like both playstyles, Savage Axe is the quote unquote correct way to design Charge Blade because it promotes both modes, not just one. Super Spam is just Sword and Shield mode with a true charge slash finisher, ignoring half of the weapon in every iteration since it could guard point out of any bad situation. Paired with the fact that Charge Blade mains are getting really good with Super Spam, so the risk versus reward of landing your finisher is a joke. Capcom decided to make the neutral super a bit more riskier by shoehorning in the AED input while leaving the counter based supers alone since they already have enough risk and reward attached to them. Like if you enjoyed the video, comment any corrections on the information down below and feel free to discuss any changes to Charge Blade as well. Subscribe if you want to see more Monster Hunter Wilds content like this. That's all I got for this one. Greedy Knight, signing out.